Hey guys, what's up? It's Greg Srizavasti with Find Your Film. For this one, it's going to be a very quick, not even an episode, a mini episode. It's an interview with Catherine Bernardo and Alden Richards. They are the star of a new movie called Hello, Love Again. And this movie is a sequel to the previous hit from five years ago called Hello, Love, Goodbye. What's interesting, selfishly for me, is both of these actors are Filipino. This is a Filipino film. It's been a big hit in the U.S., obviously bigger hit in the Philippines. As of several days ago, it was the highest grossing Filipino movie in the Philippines, which is great. And, you know, I've been doing interviews for over 30 years, and I mentioned to the both of them before we started recording that they were probably only just two of maybe less than 10 Filipinos I've interviewed in my 30 plus years of doing this. So it was an honor on my end as an interviewer journalist to interview them for this new movie called Hello, Love Again. Here's a quick synopsis on the film. Quote, Hello, Love Again picks up five years after Joy, played by Catherine Bernardo, said goodbye to Ethan, played by Alden Richards, and Hong Kong to pursue her dreams in Canada, specifically Calgary. I think the movie was shot in Calgary. Reuniting in a country after overcoming distance and a global shutdown, Joy and Ethan must navigate the complexities of their changed lives and rediscover their connection Amidst New Challenges. Movie is written by Carmi Raimundo and Crystal S. San Miguel from a story by Raimundo San Miguel and Olivia Lamasan. The movie is directed by Kathy Garcia Sampana and it was distributed by Star Cinema. It's a leading production company behind some of the highest grossing Filipino films. Star Cinema has a proven track record of successful releases, including Rewind, the top grossing Filipino film globally. Now, it's interesting because hello, it says Hello, Love Again is a top grossing film in the Philippines as of this moment. We'll see, we will see now with this whole international tour that Catherine Bernardo and Alden Richards were on, if it will be the top grossing film, Filipino film internationally. So I don't know the exact stats of that as of this recording, but let's just say this movie is a huge hit already and it's breaking a lot of records. Is the movie worth watching? Personally, I think, yes, I, this is a weepy, sentimental, but very real romantic drama, it's sort of a ro- romantic comedy of these two people, these two Filipinos. I didn't see the, the original one, which was set in Hong Kong. Obviously, they fell in love. They assumedly had a relationship in Hong Kong. Now it follows their lives over in Canada. And what's interesting about this movie is it it's set, okay, present day, it's not set, it's p- set post-COVID present day, but then you see a lot of Joy and Ethan's struggles as a couple to make it in Calgary during COVID. And both of them go through really expect really bad hardships. And will they or won't they be a couple or not? That's the main crux of this movie. I have my thoughts on the ending of the film. I'm sure back in the Philippines or people who are fans of Hello, Love Again, there are split reviews and thoughts on the ending of Hello, Love Again. I thought it was very interesting. I can't really talk about what happens. I'm not going to give spoilers on this particular episode, but it was a very interesting ending, in my opinion. Having known nothing about Catherine Bernardo and Alden Richards, they're superstars in their respective country, international stars, really love the chemistry in this film. They really go well together as a couple. And I even told them from in the interview, definitely want to see the original Hello, Love, Goodbye after watching Hello, Love again. So, it was movie was released, Hello Love Again, that is, in 248 locations across the U.S. and Canada, making it the widest North American release ever for a Filipino film. Thank you, press release, for all of this information. Now, just before we get to the interview, it's only a little bit over seven minutes. The audio, at least my audio, is not very good because that's my fault, not the audio film people, because I placed the lavalier, aka the, the little mic that you're supposed to put in your shirt. I was just so nervous and clumsy that I put it in the wrong place. Henceforth, you're going to hear a little bit of glitchiness on the audio on my questions. But the good thing is Catherine Bernardo and Alden Richards, they sound perfectly fine. Okay. In this interview, seven minutes again, I was able, this is the Find Your Film podcast. So I was able to ask them about their favorite movies. Bernardo mentioned Forrest Gump as one of her favorite movies, which is, in my opinion, a great pick. Some people don't love it because it might be too overly sentimental and glossy. I, that movie, I'm way older than Bernardo. I watched that movie in the theaters. I have a great sentimental attachment to it. 
was playing in a now defunct movie theater in this place called Agoura Hills, California. I think it was either called the Man 8 or the Man 16. I saw it in a very relatively empty theater. From my recollection, right next to that theater was a brick and mortar Ben and Jerry's ice cream shop. I don't think they have those anymore. After having a great time over at watching Forrest Gump, I went next door to get the Cherry Garcia at Ben and Jerry's. I think this movie was released in 93. Let me check on Forrest Gump because I think if I recall, it was the year after I I graduated from college over at UCLA. Yes, it was released in 1994. I graduated in 1993. And yeah, I really was blown away with, with this movie. It's great to see on the big screen. If Forrest Gump ever played two hours and 22 minutes, my goodness, PG-13, PG if it ever plays in some kind of theater near you and you haven't seen the big theatrical experience, it's worth it. It's directed by Robert Zemeckis. Here's stateside right now. It's streaming on Paramount Plus. And yeah, Robin Wright starred in it, Gary Sinise. So many great performances. And it was a really good pick. I'm glad that Bernardo said that for Forrest Gump. I will add that to the Find Your Film archives, which, by the way, I haven't started yet. I need to start the Find Your Film archives. All of my actor and filmmaker movie picks and top movies will be found in an archive on my website, findyourfilms.com. Maybe I will, I've been stopping and starting over the last several years. I think I will start with Catherine Bernardo as at number one with Forrest Gump, as far as my archive goes. And number two, Alden Richards. He mentioned this Will Smith film, which I'm typing, typing right now. I believe it's The Pursuit of Happiness. Is that the movie? And I think, if I recall, happiness is spelled in a different fashion. Let me see right now. So that was a very interesting, it's based on a true story. Very interesting movie. Yes, The Pursuit of Happiness, happy and the ness instead of H-A-P-P-I-N-E-S. Most of you know it's The Pursuit of Happy, H-A-P-P-Y-N-E-S-S. And it is the true story of a struggling salesman, quote, who takes custody of his son, as he's starting to begin a life-changing professional career. Stars Will Smith, his son Jaden Smith, Tanya Newton, and it's directed by Gabriel Muccino. I did not mention the plot summary of Forrest Gump because everyone knows you know, it's one of Tom Hanks's and Robin Wright's most signature films. This one directed by Gabriel Muccino, it's, it was a, I remember it being a hit when it was released in 2006. I've been meaning to see this movie forever. I'm sorry about my, my throat. It's really weird. But back then, I was living in downtown Los Angeles. One of my really good friends that time, we would there was a, a bar right next to where, where I used to live. And one of the movies he would nag me about watching back in that 2006, 2007, 2008, even a couple of years later, he would say, please go see this movie. It's an amazing film, The Pursuit of Happiness. I still haven't seen it. Hold on one second. So per Alden Richards' recommendations, maybe I should actually watch The Pursuit of Happiness. Now, one of the reasons why I, it's taken me almost 20 years to even watch this and I still haven't seen it. I, oh, by the way, I'm looking at his filmography. I still need to see King Richard. But a couple of years after that, there was a movie he did called, I think it was called Seven Pounds. And that was directed by by the guy who did by Gabriel Muccino. So The Pursuit of Happiness was released in 2006. And it's weird because after that, he directed Will Smith. He hasn't had as big a career. Yes, in 2008, two years later, he directed Will Smith in Seven Pounds. That movie, when it was released, had a lot of mixed reactions. But if I recall back in 2008, I really loved that film and it ended up being one of my favorites from that year. Did it start Eva Mendez? My recollection? No, my fault. Stars Rosario Dawson. My horrible fault. Michael Ely, Woody Harrelson, Barry Pepper. That's a movie I actually do need to rewatch again. I remember the ending was pretty heartbreaking. But I interviewed Will Smith and the cast and crew for Seven Pounds back in 2008. And I believe, if I recall, Muccino as well. And the reason why I haven't seen it is not my laziness, number one. And number two, I just was thinking maybe the pursuit of happiness might be as depressing as seven pounds or might be, they might be kind of the same movie. That was my initial thoughts during those, during that time. Obviously I'm wrong. And yeah, I will, for Alden Richards' recommendation, I will watch, finally watch the pursuit of happiness. Let me know what you guys think of these three movies. Hello, Love Again, most importantly, Forrest Gump, and The Pursuit of Happiness. Should I watch these movies? 
and are were they worthy watches for you? Specifically, Hello Love Again is now in theaters as if this is recording in US and Canada, and I believe it's still in the Philippines as well. I'll leave a link where you can check it out. Hopefully, you'll see it this weekend or next. If not, I'm sure it'll get a pretty wide streaming release here in the States. All right. Thanks again so much. Apologize for my bab- babbling. Seven minutes of Bernardo and Richard. Again, audio is a little bit iffy on my end, but the most important stuff is you can hear them in a legible and clear fashion for the interviews for Hello Love Again. Thanks again for supporting me over here at the Find Your Film podcast. More to come very, very soon. And for more entertainment news and reviews and information, go to findyourfilms.com. Have a great week watching movies. Take care. Bye. Hey guys, what's up? It's Dream. Pleasure to meet you both. Yeah. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So I had a lot of uh, emotions and feelings regarding your film because it reminds me of my own family, how they would send money back and how, you know, it's really a push and pull about how much you love your family and how much you want to support your own dreams. Is that why this film to both of you is so special and important to so many people? Yes, I guess so. Because upon reading the material actually from the first have you seen the first movie hello love i'm gonna see that too oh my god you should should watch it full experience well yes because it talks about the international or ofw as well for the first part it's it was in hong kong and this time in canada and i think we both personally can relate to the characters as well because joy and ethan are both you know hardworking people just like how we are built as filipinos right we work as much as we could just to provide for our family and it talks about not just that it talks about dreams as well it talks about wanting more and it talks about joy and finding home so I I think that's what makes the material so special and it's something that anyone can relate to and me personally I admire the characters their strengths and how they love their family so much and as a Filipino it's something I I think it's a Filipino trait that um, I admire the most our love for family. This movie is not just a love story, it's a life story. Yeah. So what is it like for you to have these movies come out and you have people who love the film, but then they share their own stories of sacrifice with their family and the people that they love? It must be a, a very overwhelming and most importantly gratifying experience for both of you. Yeah, we, we are so grateful with all the stories that these people are able to tell after watching our film. You know, uh, for some, it's like an eye opener for them. Like you, you don't have to be ashamed with where you came from and how you got to where you are. Like sharing kinds of uh, those kinds of stories inspires us, inspires us more. And uh, it somehow kind of validates our uh, expectations from the film. And of course, for the people, from the people who will be able to see it. And we're just so happy that we were able to inspire a lot of people with this film. And we couldn't be more grateful with the support and love that they've been giving us. And that's quite. It gives us a lot of a lot of passion and a lot of inspiration, you know, to even do more uh, content like this for them. What is the key for you as actors to stay in the moment and locked in and connected? Because you guys have some really intense scenes yeah. and you guys are very good friends. So I'm sure that helps. But what's the key to pulling it off? Is it just allowing yourself to make mistakes along the way and getting to that place? It's teamwork. Yeah, I think um, the teamwork yeah. is very, very special. We have one goal. Mm-hmm. When we said yes to this project, we both decided to just jump and give it our all so the goal was there and the friendship it started with a good foundation so i think that's very very important as well and i think the trust so i trust him as my co-actor as my friend and we both trust our director as well so i i think that will resonate in the film Um, all these important things that um we considered before saying yes to this yeah and uh, actually it's really a matter of trust I think that's the basic foundation, you know, for us to be able to work out a certain scene, like all of the heavy scenes that we have in the film. Yes, like what you said, we allowed ourselves to fail at times. And the good thing that we have our director, Andre Kathy Garcia, to guide us and to navigate the characters properly so that we don't uh, like deviate from what's supposed to be done for certain scenes. And we really enjoyed the process making this film. You know, there the, it's a challenging, but uh, it's worth the, it's worth it. And uh, all of the scenes that we were able to do, I think we owe it to each other because yeah. we held on to each other for until we finished filming. And until now, uh, we're doing it. Yes. This is a very universal story, but this is also a story about Filipino culture. It's something growing up in my early 50s, I never had. 
What does it mean to you guys to know that this movie is doing so well in the Philippines? It's doing well here in the U.S. But most importantly, Filipino culture will be just expanded and, and spotlighted with this film and seen to so many people. This be, must mean a lot. Yeah, and this this is a showcase of our culture and something that we are very proud of. You know, like uh, Filipino core values are being showcased in this showcased in this film. Our love for family, our love basically for other people as well. Like how we are in terms of you know uh, how we take care of these people, and at the same time, it shows the warmth that we have towards uh, a lot of people. And I think it's high time that uh, you know Asian content must be recognized at this time and we're just very proud and we're very glad that the film is performing well here in the United States and all over the world and we couldn't be more grateful and at the same time we're just so inspired and you know so motivated to even do more contents like this eventually. My final question to both of you is can each of you name one of your all-time favorite films and what is it about this specific film that speaks to you personally? Any film. Any film and thank you for your time by the way. I think um, my personal favorite would be Forrest Gump. Yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah, I love it. I, yes, I, I, yeah, I love that because it talks about life. It talks about dreams as well, similar with this one. And it's the kind of movie that I can rewatch over and over again just to motivate me and to give me that extra push when needed. Yeah. Yeah, Forrest Gump. You this way? Pursuit of Happiness by Will I love you. Yes, yes. You know, you, uh, sometimes you don't have anything with you, like you're, all, you're zero and then you have this one product that you have to sell. And it only takes one moment, mm-hmm. like a, a certain break in your life to change everything. And I think uh, we all get those kinds of moments in life like a certain break or a certain opportunity come, that came our way. And it also goes uh, the same way in the film, like uh, with Joy, with Kat's character there. Like a lot of opportunities presented itself to her, but um, it's really a matter of decision and the choices that you make that will define the next uh, moments in your life. So I think it's really a matter of choice. And in life, we should make the right choices for us to, you know, Succeed. Yeah, succeed. Thank you guys so much for your time. I really love the film. Thank you. Thank you. What's your What's your answer? I'm curious. Yeah. Oh, what's my answer? Yeah. Oh, you know, I, I love this. I love I love Alfred Hitchcock. There's a movie called Vertigo that I really love. It's very mysterious. And Vertigo. Very cool. I haven't seen that. Yeah. Before. Yeah. It's not as good as your movies. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for your time. I appreciate Thank you. Okay. Hey guys, what's up? It's Greg again. I have one more interview. Josh Wiggins. Josh Wiggins, really cool actor. Loved him in this movie called Mean Dreams. That'll come, that'll come up in a couple more minutes or in a minute or two. Just wanted to mention his latest film. It's called Armor. Josh Wiggins stars with Sylvester Stallone, Dash Mihawk, Mihawk, Mihawk. Is that how you pronounce? My, my bad, Mihawk or Mihawk. But anyway, Sylvester Stallone, Jason Patrick, one of my all-time favorite actors, and Dash Mihawk. And I apologize for that pronunciation of that name if I didn't get it correctly. It's a, an action thriller about a father and son team. They are armored truck drivers. Jason Patrick is the father. The son is played by Josh Wiggins. They're driving on any. On a hot southern day, hot day in the south, they're crossing a bridge in the armored car and they get sandwiched in, sandwiched in between a bunch of mercenaries led by Sylvester Stallone. The rest of the movie deals with how it's sort of a chess match because their armored truck is not in good shape and the guys want to get in and get the valuables inside the truck. The, the guys in the truck, the father and son team, they know if they get out of the truck, they will be killed. However, the Sylvester Stallone character says, "Hey, if you get out of the car, if you get out of the vehicle, we will not kill you. We just want what's inside." Should he trust a criminal? Obviously not. So that is a premise of Armor. Eric Holmes and I reviewed that film this week on Cinematics, and we both gave it a very positive review. It's a very, it's a cheeseburger of a movie. You know what you're going to get with Armor, and I just have some extra bias because I'm a fan of. Patrick and Stallone, and it's just a well done, straight ahead thriller. I also love. Wiggins is an up-and-coming actor. Again, I, I said I'm a huge fan of his film, Mean Dreams. And by the way, towards the end of the interview with this being Find Your Film, I asked him to name a movie that he, from his own resume that he feels is underrated and more people should watch, that movie being The Bachelors, which stars him and J.K. Simmons and Odea Rush. As if there's a recording, I believe it's currently streaming on Prime Video. So he mentioned The Bachelors. I also mentioned Mean Dreams, a movie he stars with Sophie Nelise. So those are those are a couple of movie recommendations for you guys. If you do not see Armor this weekend or next weekend, or if Armor's not your taste, maybe the character-driven The Bachelors might be more up your alley. Or Mean Dreams, 
which was to me a coming of age story that reminded me of films like Undertow or The Night of the Hunter. Just a very interesting, interesting movie that I saw. When was it released? I think it was released around 2015, 2016-ish. Around, I could be wrong. But I, I interviewed, not I interviewed, I reviewed the movie with Anderson. I forgot what he thought of Mean Dreams. But if I recall, both of us really enjoyed that film. I think that was one of Bill Paxton's last roles, and he was fantastic in that movie. That's a movie, Mean Dreams, that I need to rewatch again. Armor, by the way, I said it's a cheeseburger. Nothing wrong with being a cheeseburger. And it has a really cool twist at the end, which I'm not going to mention, but I thought that was really well done too. So here's my interview with Josh Wiggins. You have a couple of... A bunch of movie recommendations from this episode. You have my personal favorite film of all time, Vertigo. You have Alden Richards in The Pursuit of Happiness. Catherine Bernardo, She Loved Forrest Gump. And as far as the actor's resume from Josh Wiggins, you have his two two picks, The Bachelors. And I forced that pick in with Mean Dreams, but you can tell that he also loved that film as well. So Armor is currently, as of this recording, it's currently in theaters. It's available on digital on demand. I will have an Amazon link where you guys can purchase or rent the film. Would love to hear what you think of any of these movies. Hit me up over at info at findyourfilms.com. If you use the Amazon links in the show notes, you definitely, you will support me and my fellow brethren over at Cinematics, Bruce Berkey, Eric Holmes, and even Anderson Cowan. So all the pennies and all the purchases via Amazon are highly welcome and great. I'm, I'm grateful for them. So thank you so much for your support of this podcast, as well as your love love of movies. Tell me what you think of any of the movies discussed on this episode. Take care. That's it. Josh Wiggins, and then we're, you guys are done. Take care. Bye. Josh, how are you this morning? Good, man. How are you doing? Good. So first off, right off the bat, one of my favorite actors is Jason Patrick. I grew up loving his movies. <laughs> he just seems like this great method actor, and he's had such a great resume. You have a great resume as well, but you're much younger. What kind of lessons did you take from him, especially... It's a generic question, but you're literally in close quarters with him for this role. Yeah. Well, I, the biggest thing from watching Jason was uh, just that he was he was never afraid to change things like on the fly and make a lot of suggestions and try to just really grind out the scene to try and figure out what works and what's best for, for the film. And uh, just that level of, of willingness to grind it out was something that really stood out for me, just not being afraid to speak up and 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 change things and like you said it's you know close quarters it's just us in the back of this truck for hours and so it was as an actor it's really interesting because you don't really have anything else to go off of you know you're pretty much just going off of each other and so it was really just like i mean acting at its most basic form there's a part in the story where your character says what's going on it's really hot in here and i'm thinking it is it must be really hot in there was it really hot <laughs> is that movie magic and how physically grueling overall that production was for for you oh it was it was hot everywhere there's a lot of sweat in this movie and most of it is real because the especially the, the driving scenes in the armored truck i mean there, there's no ac in that thing and we shot in the south in september and uh, you know we're in these we're in the uniforms which are not made for comfort or breathability so that adds to it and yeah, we we're just sweating our asses off. Uh, and it was it was hot, but it's good. I mean, it's supposed to be kind of a suffocating, claustrophobic movie a little bit. So it you know it works out. In prepping for this interview, I, by the way, I really love a lot of your films, and I'm gonna get to some of your resume towards the end of the interview. But you mentioned in a podcast that you don't specifically live in Hollywood, but you have a life outside of cinema, and this is your your career. But then you have a separate life. Has that been able to ground you as far as what? how you view the business and how differently do you view your craft as opposed to when you were a child now that you're an adult is it still the same that kind of passion and being kind of with a family in a grounded area as well that must help it's a really good question uh yeah i think by separation from hollywood quote unquote whatever that means these days is intentional i mean i like I, you know i still have all the same friends i grew up with and that kind of like having that separation in my life and i i never i don't know i I think of myself as an actor, but I also think of myself as, you know, acting is something I do. And I don't know what, I don't know. It's weird. And I think being away from Hollywood is a part of that, but I do. I mean, I, I love it. And I, there's nothing else I'd, I'd, I'd want to be doing than, you know, being a part of, of telling stories. But yeah, from, from when I started, how it's changed, I, 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 I'm obviously much more comfortable. Uh, and I can kind of, uh, in terms of the world of acting, like doing stuff like this, I think I'm, 
I, I view it much differently. I'm significantly more comfortable and I can kind of just get into it and do it and not have to think about it too much. Um, whereas like at first you're in this festival circuit and it feels really crazy, but now it just feels normal, I guess. Joshua, what's really interesting about your career is someone can go through your resume and I think this is very rare. You have a very varied selection of films that you've been part of. Was that by design? And on that B level, what kind of advice have you received, like the most important piece of advice that has actually carried you through just picking these really interesting and diverse projects? Uh, yeah, I think there's, there, I'm definitely very deliberate with the movies that I do, for sure. And I've always wanted to do all different kinds of stuff. You know, I've done a lot of drama, obviously. I've always wanted to do comedies and I've, I wanted to do like... I want to do voiceovers for animations. Like I want to, I want to try everything. Um, I've never felt like I wanted to chase a specific genre or vibe. And what, what was the second part of the question again? And just a piece of advice that is sort of you've carried maybe now that you're mature and you've had such a varied career and then you're over a decade into the business. Oh God, don't tell me that. It's so scary. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the I think I don't know. I've always picked bits and pieces from everybody that I've worked with, um, little pieces of advice, but. One thing that I heard somebody say, and it was when I was shooting Max, which is my third movie, and it was the biggest thing I'd done at that point. And someone on the set, someone on the crew at the rap party, just he, he was talking to me and he was like, look, we're not curing cancer. And that's one thing that really stuck out to me. And it's kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier about how I've kind of just been able to take a lot of this side of the industry in stride and not take it too seriously, not not in like a disrespectful way, but just in a way that's like I can allow myself to be relaxed and calm and just kind of take it as it comes. So, yeah, that's one of the biggest things that's that's stuck with me for sure. Josh, my final question is a two parter. First one right off the top. Can you name one of your all time favorite movies? And what is it about this specific film that you go back to and resonates with you today, even today? I did. It's, I have favorite movies but the first movie I always say when people ask me what's your top five is always Shawshank Redemption. So I guess that's my number one. But just because yeah, of the story, the theme maybe of forgiveness yeah, and redemption. It has this, I think Frank Darabont is just everything he does is so good. But um, yeah, it has this like nostalgia to it and this feeling of like longing for in a situation that's pretty horrible. <laughs> you know, he's being, you know, spoilers, but framed for murdering his wife. He didn't do it. He's in this horrible situation, but it, something just feels like an old whimsical, like folk tale. Um, and you're just rooting for this guy. And then the, the connection of, you know, that whole theme of hope in a hopeless place and finding connection and relationships. And then the whole Brooks thing. It's so, yeah, it, it's so sad, but it's, yeah, I love that movie. Great. And the final part of that question is, just from your own resume, can you name a, a project that you were involved in that you felt was might be a little bit underrated and that you really love and you you would love our listeners and watchers to check out? What makes it special for you? I love these questions. I would say um, The Bachelors, it's a movie I did uh, with J.K. Simmons and Odea Rush. And uh, I really, really like that movie. Uh, it's, it's about, you know, this father and son, kind of a similar, a similar thing where father and son, there's been a death in the family and, and there's a, a big wedge in between them and, and they just kind of have to figure it out. Um, there's no explosions or guns or anything, but it's a very, it's a very good uh, character piece that I would definitely recommend uh, people check out. I'm sure you'd also recommend Mean Dreams because I just recently interviewed Sophie Nelise and I asked her from her resume and she said that was such a special film for her. Uh, Not to put you on the spot, but what was that like working with Sophie and you know, just a uh, great cast and a, a, a very talented director as well. Great story. I love that movie so much. No, I love that movie too. That's one of my favorites that I've done for sure. Uh, I, I love Sophie to death. Still, we, we've still kept in touch for all these years. Um, she's killing it right now. I Yeah, she's awesome. I, I love her to death. Uh, really would would like to work with her again but uh, yeah go sophie right, and go you. mean dreams oh yeah go meet what i even when it was released i said more people should see this movie and now even years later do do you i mean do people ever come up to you about that movie because that's a very unique film that i think is so under the radar so i know yeah i do i love that movie to death well it was just on netflix recently in the oh. in canada i think and it was like top five i think so if it can get the platform, people watch it and it does resonate with people. So hopefully, hopefully it gets its its stride. But yeah, it's that's definitely one of my favorites that I've done. 
and then but and how the movie turned out and just the whole experience shooting it was so fun yeah a lot of, a lot of good memories with that one josh thanks again for your time really enjoyed your work in armor thank you man appreciate it